Rise and shine, John Boy. It's time to revisit the good old days. If there's one TV series firmly entrenched in the collective memory of Americans, it's The Waltons. Set against the backdrop of the Depression era, this show epitomized family values that resonated deeply with many viewers. For most, childhood was never quite as idyllic as life in the mountain home of the devout Walton family. The characters' lives, filled with profound challenges and moments of joy as they pursued their dreams, struck a chord with audiences in the 1970s. Yet, it was the undeniable chemistry among the cast that truly propelled the show to success. Their rapport created a sense of warmth that made the Waltons a beloved escape for families seeking wholesome entertainment in a world filled with cynicism. Let's catch up with what the cast of The Waltons is doing today. John Walmsley as Jason Walton After moving from his homeland of England to the United States, actor-musician John Walmsley found success as a voiceover artist, notably lending his voice to Christopher Robin in the Academy Award-winning animated Disney short film Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day in 1969. Just three years later, he became part of the Waltons cast, portraying Jason, the family's second eldest son. This role allowed Walmsley to display his musical and songwriting talents in numerous episodes. Walmsley later joined his Waltons TV family for several television movies, but primarily focused on his music career. As a long-standing member of Richard Marx's band, Walmsley collaborated with renowned figures in rock, pop, and country music including Roger Daltrey of The Who, Brian Setzer, The Doobie Brothers, and country icon Merle Haggard. Additionally, Walmsley dedicated himself to session work for various TV series, contributing tracks to shows such as Seventh Heaven, where he also made a guest appearance as a band member, Beverly Hills 902 Tow, and The Secret Life of the American Teenager. Eric Scott, as Ben Walton. Similar to Kami Kotler, Eric Scott also departed from the entertainment industry following the conclusion of the show. After portraying the character Ben Walton, the actor opted out of pursuing further acting opportunities and transitioned into working at a delivery company, eventually taking ownership. Preferring to prioritize family life, he experienced multiple marriages and now runs Chase Messengers a courier service based in California. Nonetheless, he made occasional guest appearances on shows like Family Feud, Celebrity Bowling, and an independent horror film from the 80s titled The Loch Ness Horror. He was briefly wedded to actress Carrie Lewis. His second marital union was with Teresa Fargo, the mother of his daughter Ashley, who tragically passed away from acute myelominocytic leukemia shortly after Ashley's birth on November 5, 1992, having contracted the illness during pregnancy. In March 2000, Scott exchanged vows with Cynthia, Cindy, Ullman Wolfen. They share a daughter, Emma, born in 2001, and a son, Jeremy, welcomed into the world in 2004. Presently, Scott is the proprietor of Chase Messengers, a package delivery service situated in Encino, California. Judy Norton as Mary Ellen Walton. After portraying the inspiring Mary Ellen Walton throughout all nine seasons of The Waltons, Judy Norton mostly withdrew from the screen to pursue other artistic endeavors. Aside from showcasing her singing abilities through several albums, she dedicated years to directing, writing, and starring in numerous stage productions in Canada. Born in Santa Monica, California, Judy Norton is the daughter of Harry and Constance Norton. She commenced her affiliation with Scientology at 13 and eventually became a minister within the church. At the age of 18, she entered matrimony with Douglas Taylor in 1976. However, the union ended in divorce in 1978. Subsequently, she tied the knot with former football player Lynn Hughes, from whom she later parted ways. Post the Waltons, Norton made several guest appearances, including roles in The Love Boat and a sitcom titled The Quarantine Bunch. 
Additionally, Norton utilized her writing skills to craft a thriller in 2018, Inclusion Criteria, in which she also took on the lead role. Currently, she enjoys marital bliss with one son. Cammy Kotler as Elizabeth Walton The youngest member of the Walton family, Elizabeth Walton, was brought to life by Cammy Kotler, who was merely six years old when the series commenced. Following the tremendous triumph of the Waltons, Kotler promptly withdrew from the entertainment industry, pursued higher education, and eventually embarked on a teaching career in a rural Virginia school. Kotler has scarcely, if ever, made a return to the big screen. While she did make an uncredited appearance in Mary McDonough's film Christmas on Honeysuckle Lane, apart from a few reunion appearances, she predominantly focuses on endeavors beyond the realm of Hollywood. Nevertheless, she operates her own YouTube channel under her name, where she sporadically shares reactions to classic episodes of The Waltons. In addition to her role as an educator, Kotler also operated her own boutique travel company and managed a cafe in San Francisco. She has revisited her portrayal of the youngest Walton sibling in each of the Waltons' reunion films and occasionally delivers speeches and makes personal appearances. In 2010, Kotler was featured in a Walton's cast reunion and series retrospective that aired on the cable network INSP. She is married and blessed with two children, Ralph Waite as John Walton, senior, actor. Ralph Waite, known for his portrayal of John Walton, senior on The Waltons, had an extensive career in film, television, and theater before joining the cast of the CBS series. He made his debut on Broadway in the 1960 production of Marathon 33 and entered the world of cinema with his first film role in Cool Hand Luke, alongside future Waltons guest star Morgan Woodward, in 1967. Waited took on more film projects in the 1970s, including the 1971 Jack Nicholson drama Five Easy Pieces, The Gritty Trouble Man, and two films opposite Charles Bronson, Chato's Land, and The Stone Killer, prior to joining The Waltons. During his time on The Waltons, Waite received an Emmy nomination and earned a second nomination for his role in Roots in 1977. He also directed numerous episodes of the series, which set the stage for his directorial debut with the 1980 film On the Nickel. Following the conclusion of The Waltons, Waite continued to work extensively in television, appearing in multiple Waltons reunion movies and recurring roles on shows like Carnival, NCIS, portraying Gibbs's father, and Bones, as Booth's grandfather. In addition to his television work, Waite made appearances in films such as The Bodyguard and Cliffhanger. He also ran for the California seat in the U.S. House of Representatives three times between 1990 and 1998, albeit unsuccessfully. Waite passed away at the age of 85 on February 13, 2014. Will Gear as the grandfather. Veteran actor and advocate. Will Gear portrayed the Walton family patriarch, Zebulon Tyler Walton, also known as Pa or Grandpa, from seasons one to six. The character, portrayed by actor and ventriloquist Edgar Bergen in the pilot TV movie, embodied a wealth of colorful stories and down home wisdom, typical of beloved grandparents. Gear's passing between seasons six and seven also marked the end of the character, who passed away while pursuing one of his beloved pastimes, planting saplings, a passion he shared with Gear in real life. Will Gear initially aspired to be a botanist, but found his way to the stage in the early 1930s. A committed activist, Gear traveled across the United States alongside folk musicians Woody Guthrie and Burl Ives even collaborating on an album with Guthrie in 1956. His affiliation with the Communist Party and his refusal to testify before the House Committee on Un-American Activities resulted in Gere being blacklisted in the 1950s, halting his acting career abruptly. In response, 
he established the Wilgear Theatricum Botanicum, which showcased plays and performers supportive of fellow blacklisted individuals. Gear's career saw a resurgence in the 1960s, culminating in a Tony Award nomination for the 1963 musical 110 in the Shade. Prior to his iconic portrayal of Zebulon Walton, he appeared in numerous films, maintaining steady work on the series and in other television shows and movies until his passing at the age of 76 on April 22, 1978. Joe Conley as Ike Godsey, holding the fort at the general store, post office, and auto repair shop on Walton's Mountain, was amiable Ike Godsey, portrayed by seasoned character actor Joe Conley. Many of the storylines across the 172 episodes featuring Ike revolved around his union with Cora Beth Walton, Ronnie Claire Edwards, John Sr.'s second cousin, who, unlike Ike's outgoing and generous nature, was introverted and tenacious. Conley embarked on his acting journey as a youngster in radio productions, but paused his artistic pursuits for college and military service during the Korean War, where he sustained injuries. Upon his return, he resumed acting with a minor role in the 1950 film The Sound of Fury, while also managing his own real estate ventures. Conley was prepared to fall back on his secondary career when he landed the role of Ike in 1972. He remained dedicated to the series until its culmination in 1981, subsequently returning to his prosperous real estate endeavors while occasionally reuniting with his Walton's colleagues for reunion movies. Additionally, Conley made sporadic appearances beyond the Walton's realm, notably in Cast Away in 2000. Conley passed away from complications related to dementia at the age of 85 on July 7, 2013. Ellen Corby as Esther Walton. Ellen Corby, who portrayed Grandma Esther Walton, appeared as an adult in both The Homecoming and The Waltons series. Her blend of spunk, kindness, and family care in the show earned her three Emmys and a Golden Globe, marking the culmination of a lengthy and varied career in Hollywood, both in front of and behind the camera. Corby embarked on her acting journey in the late 1920s, predominantly in minor and uncredited roles. Additionally, she worked as a script assistant during this period, until her supporting role in the nostalgic film I Remember Mama garnered her an Oscar nomination in 1948. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, Corby maintained a steady presence in both film and television, appearing in Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo and numerous television series such as The Andy Griffith Show, portraying the role of Mrs. Lesh, a thief stealing hubcaps, I Love Lucy, The Addams Family, as Lurch's mother, and even Batman. In 1976, Corby left the Waltons after suffering a debilitating stroke that significantly affected her speech and mobility. Although she briefly returned in 1977, she later rejoined the cast as a recurring character for the remainder of the series and appeared in five of the six reunion films. Corby passed away at the age of 87 on April 14, 1999. David W. Harper as Jim Bob Walton like many of his fellow Walton's actors, David W. Harper also retired from the entertainment industry after the series concluded. He portrayed Jim Bob Walton throughout all nine seasons, embodying a determined young man with aspirations of becoming a pilot. Harper made appearances in a CBS miniseries titled The Blue and the Gray, and had a minor role in Michael Ritchie's mystery comedy film, Fletch, released in 1985. After bidding farewell to his acting career, he pursued education in business. Harper now leads a predominantly private life, occasionally participating in various Walton cast reunions held over the years. Harper is presently inactive in the entertainment field, opting for a serene and secluded lifestyle. Nonetheless, he occasionally attends gatherings related to the Waltons, including cast reunions and events centered around collectibles and memorabilia. Following various job experiences, he enrolled in business studies. Ronnie Claire Edwards as Cora Beth Godsey. 
On the surface, Ronnie Claire Edwards' portrayal of Corabeth Walton presents a character with distinct traits, frugal with money, prone to pretentiousness among her relatives, and possessing eccentric tendencies. However, Corabeth's idiosyncrasies stem from years of caring for her ailing parents in seclusion. Upon venturing out on her own, Corabeth undergoes a learning curve to adapt to life on Walton's Mountain. With the support of her family, particularly her husband Ike Godsey, she evolves into a beloved member of the community. Ronnie Claire Edwards, who depicted Corabeth from 1975 to 1981, appeared to possess a contrasting personality to Corabeth's initially introverted demeanor. In her earlier years, she toured with a traveling carnival across her home state of Oklahoma, serving as an assistant to a knife thrower and entertaining at mining camps. Edwards embarked on her acting journey on the stages of New York City in the early 1960s, subsequently transitioning to television and film roles, including her notable stint on The Waltons and recurring appearances on Designing Women, spanning from the 1970s to the early 2000s. In 2007, Edwards retired from acting and redirected her focus to renovating homes in Los Angeles and Dallas, Texas. Additionally, she authored several theatrical works, along with an autobiography and a cookbook. Edwards passed away at the age of 83 on June 14, 2016. Michael learned as Olivia Walton. After portraying Olivia Walton, Michael learned gained widespread recognition. Following the conclusion of The Waltons, she showcased her talent in a 1982 CBS television drama called Nurse, captivating audiences once again and earning herself an Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress. Her portrayal in The Waltons garnered numerous Emmy nominations for Outstanding Lead Actress in a drama series, of which she won three out of six nominations. In a surprising turn of events, Michael Learned's most recent project is a prominent Netflix series from 2022. She played a significant role in Da Mare, portraying the grandmother of the infamous serial killer in the series. Prior to this, she had established herself with notable roles in General Hospital and The Young and the Restless. Now enjoying her later years, she resides happily with her spouse in California, relishing a fulfilling life following a remarkable career as an exceptional actress. Mary Beth McDonough's as Aaron Walton, one of the select few Waltons actors who appeared throughout the entire series and all six Waltons movies, Mary Beth McDonough portrayed Aaron Walton, the second eldest daughter in the family. Aaron's narrative primarily revolved around her romantic endeavors, often culminating in unexpected conclusions. Eventually, the character found her niche as an assistant plant manager at a defense company during World War II. McDonough, who has also performed using the aliases Mary Elizabeth McDonough and Mary McDonough, commenced her acting journey as Aaron Walton in The Homecoming and remained a fixture on The Waltons throughout its entirety on network television. Following the conclusion of the series, she graced the screen in various feature films, including the unconventional horror flick Mortuary and the suspenseful thriller Funland, penned by Bonnie and Terry Turner, renowned for that 70s show. She later made guest appearances on shows such as ER and The West Wing, while also revisiting her role as Aaron for the Waltons reunion movies. McDonough embraced a recurring character on The New Adventures of Old Christine in the 2000s and ventured into writing, penning several books, including the 2018 publication Christmas on Honeysuckle Lane. The Hallmark Channel adapted the story into a made-for-TV film that same year, casting McDonough in a minor role, Richard Thomas as John Boy Walton. The oldest son of the Walton family, John Walton Jr., known as John Boy, was a fictionalized depiction of series creator Earl Hamner Jr., who also provided the voice for the older John Boy in the opening and closing narration of each episode. Richard Thomas portrayed John Boy in the first six seasons of the series and in three television movie reunions of the Waltons. 
he was succeeded in the role for seasons eight and nine by actor Robert Whiteman. Following his Emmy Award win and Golden Globe nomination for his portrayal on the series, Thomas maintained a steady presence on television, including appearances in TV movies and miniseries such as The Red Badge of Courage, Roots, The Next Generation, and the 1990 adaptation of It. He also participated in numerous stage productions, including performances on Broadway in Fifth of July, David Mamet's Race, and a 2017 rendition of The Little Foxes, which garnered him a Tony nomination. In recent times, Thomas has kept himself occupied with recurring roles on shows like The Americans, Billions, and NCIS New Orleans. He made a return to feature films after an extended hiatus with a role in the 2021 Netflix drama The Unforgivable, alongside Sandra Bullock. That was a delightful journey back through memory lane. It's hard to believe it's been more than four decades since we bid farewell to the Walton series. Who stood out as your preferred character on the Waltons? Appreciate you tuning in, and goodbye.